Okay, here we'll take a quick look at the WaveBasis Smart Tools. Uh, now, first things first, let's run an automatic wave count here on a daily Apple chart. Um, now, the Smart Tools are located here in the right toolbar under the wrench menu, so we're going to turn on the Smart Fibs there. Now, as many of you might already know, um, Fibonacci uh, levels are, are very commonly used in technical analysis, and they go hand in hand with wave basis. And, uh, I'm sorry, with with, um, with Elliott wave analysis, you tend to look uh, for support and resistance using uh, common Fibonacci levels. Uh, many of you might also know that it can be kind of time-consuming and tedious to to draw the the uh, Fibonacci studies on the chart. You have to squint sometimes to make sure you're getting the positioning correct or accurate. What WaveBasis does is try to tries to accelerate that workflow. So for example, if we're interested in the retracement from this wave one high, you just hover over the wave and right away you have uh, the Fibonacci retracement levels. And we can see that that wave two uh, stopped around the 786 uh, retracement Fibonacci level. Uh, similarly, we can look at the wave three and see that the wave four stopped around the 382 retracement level. Now, what, not only are both of those retracement levels within uh, the guidelines for what we might expect for common places for wave twos and wave fours to terminate, uh, the fact that wave two is uh, deeper than wave four is also in line with what we would typically expect for an impulsive move. So that sort of thing tends to help us build confidence in, in a wave count. Um, now, what else? Uh, makes these tools smart is the fact that when you hover over wave two, you're uh, most likely going to be interested in the extension from wave two. So we can see in this case that wave three stopped right around just just between the uh, uh, 1.382 uh, extension and the uh, 1618 extension. Now that's those are smart fibs, and th this is again, as I said, a good way to to build confidence in a in a given count. But fibs are also used, as again, as many of you might know, to anticipate where uh, future uh, support and resistance levels might be. So, for example, you can hover this wave four. Uh, as you, in in this particular case, you see a green box up there. That's our our, our projection. We'll talk about that more in a, in a separate video. But one of the things I'll also show you is you can also lock these Fibonacci levels on the chart whenever you like, and you can do that as many times as you want. Um, so in this particular case, we see we're projecting wave five, and we can see that up here we're just above the, the 618 uh, extension. You now, depending on kind of you know, depending on market uh, category, asset type, or your particular style, um, different Fibonacci levels might have different meanings for you. But the point is, uh, you can see them all right on the chart very quickly without having to open a new tool and, and draw them in, in, in on the chart. Um, what else is uh, what else I should point out here is that not only are there Fibonacci uh, levels, but there are also channels. Uh, and as as many of you know, Elliott wave channels have a particular uh, technique for being calculated. Uh, usually, for example, when you're hovering, when you're looking at a wave two, you you can use a channel to um, as a guideline to try to understand where wave three might end. This isn't a great example because you can see that the wave three overshot the channel. Uh, same thing here. Hovering over one wave will, will give you a channel to try to anticipate where the next wave will end. So in this case, the, the wave four fell a bit short of the bottom of the channel. And same thing here. As we can see here, um, trying to look for where wave five might end, looks like we're bumping up not only against our projection level green box, but up, up against the, the top of the channel there. And you can see the dashed line, uh, again, is a standard L8 wave calculation to show um, where uh, wave three and wave one both uh, indicate where, where wave five might top out. Um, and as you can see, you can have these, uh, any number of these Fibonacci tools turned on, I'm sorry, any number of the smart tools turned on at one time. I'll show you individually because because it can be a little confusing with, the, with them all on. Um, same thing with fans. You hover, you have your fan retracement levels. And you can see along, right alongside the uh, standard Fibonacci levels. 
And just for demonstration purposes, we can take a quick look at uh, arcs. The effect is the same. Instantly, and then you can right click and lock them on the chart whenever you like. Um, I think that's it for the, the smart tools. These, this is a way to really accelerate your, your workflow. And incidentally, I should mention that when you have the opportunity to see so many uh, Fibonacci um, retracement and extension levels without having to draw them yourself, you do get, you get a, you have a, more of an opportunity to see actually how effective they, they really are. So for example, here we hit, we, we would expect a wave two to, to hit about the 50% retracement. There we are. We have a wave four that hit the two, three, six. So you get a, you get the experience of having a, a much wider sampling of, of, um, again, how effective Fibonacci levels can be. So I hope this, uh, gives you a good introduction to the smart tools and, um, Thanks for watching.